Welcome to the first ever Bibok. And if you're asking yourself what the hell is that, that is Bizarre Build Out of Context, where I take a look at your or the community's Bizarre Builds, and uh, we sort of dig under the hood and see which is best. Best can, of course, mean many, many different things. However, it's not quite as simple as just you build a thing, show it to me, and I say, ah, that's good, that's bad. No, 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 no. We have some uh, restrictions in place to make things a little bit more interesting. First of all, you have to use one of the three items shown in the Bizarre Discord each week. These are released typically on a Tuesday and I stream on a Friday, so these guys have only had a couple of days to put these builds together before I take a look at them. The second restriction is that this is a build out of context. What does that mean? Well, that means no hero stats, no hero skills, no extra parts of your, uh, your items come to life. So if you have an item that says adds damage to it every time it does battle, well, we're starting that item at zero, as if it was just newly bought this round. I will, of course, take all these things into consideration, but you're not going to have any of these extra bonuses helping you along the way. You have to do with what you can completely out of context. To recap for anyone that hasn't been paying attention to the official Bizarre Discord, there are new items released there every single week, so you should probably join that. Links are below. The three items this week were Stell's Red Lantern, Pygmalion's Loop, at least I think that's how we're calling it, and Dooley's Titanium. We'll go over these items a bit more as we see the builds. So the first build we have today is a uh, Pygmalion build from a Rotten Pickle. Uh, it includes the Spiky Shield, the Loop, which is the item of choice, Robe, Marbles, Landscraper, and Jewelry. Now, these are still early days in the bazaar, so you're probably about as clued up on some of the items as I am, and I've been going through a lot of them recently. So at least for these earlier sessions, we're going to actually be taking quite a close look at what each item does, as well as do a bit of analysis. And then later on, I'm going to assume a little bit of knowledge, but for the time being, don't worry if none of those items meant anything to you, we're going to dig deep into each of them. I guess we should start things off by taking a look at the loop. Okay, so loop every seven seconds gives items to the left plus three shielding and items to the right as a passive six charge 6% six faster. This is a small piece of gear. So this is easy to fit into a lot of builds because it's nice and tiny. Um, and it has this cool sort of left and right mechanic going on that we've seen a lot more with Duty recently, where all of the items to the left of it get a bonus and all the items to the right of it get a different bonus. So it's like, where do you place it in your build? Where is the right place? Like, do you want the short cooldown items to the left to give them more shielding and the long cooldown items to the right so they charge faster? Probably. But then is there an item that's short cooldown that you want to be really short cooldown? Would that be better off to the right and not giving you plus shielding? Who knows? So, and then you've got other adjacency bonuses, like if you put loop, uh, if you put a large item to the right of loop that you want to buff a small fast firing item, you're better off just having it to the left of it. I love these really interesting decisions where you have to place things. So that's one thing we're going to have to pay close attention to is where they put the loop. And I believe this is left to right. I'll check the I'll check the the actual build. So left to right is landscraper, robe, marbles, jewelry, loop, spiky shield. The only thing that's charging faster in a rotten pickles build is the spiky shield. Jewelry, marbles, robe, and landscraper are all getting plus three shielding. So let's, uh, I guess, let's just start left to right. Let's take a look at Landscraper, the next thing. Landscraper, every eight seconds, gain eight shield and give all your shielding items plus one for the fight. This is a large property, so it takes up a lot of space, but this is already a very, very nice combination. That I'd be interested in doing the maths here. I'm not going to dive into it I'm because in a game, I'm probably not going to commit to doing the maths. But if you have... Loop giving it Landscraper plus three shielding every time it triggers. Is that better than Landscraper being to the right and triggering more regularly and giving your other shielding items plus one more often? It probably comes down to how long the fight lasts. If it's a long fight, I think Landscraper to the right of Loop is better than Landscraper to the left. But we'll find out as we dig through the rest of the build. So we also have the Robe next up. 
Rogue, every five seconds, gain five shield. When you gain this, gain ten armor. Nice. Okay, so we're really going hard on the shielding here. So avoid every single jewels that you see, because she's probably got some feed uh, or joy. Joy goes straight through shielding. Uh, and I think poison also goes through shielding, so potentially avoid Mac. We know that he has some poison. Um, but otherwise, excellent against Vanessa, excellent against Stell as well. Um, and good into other Pygmalions, possibly good into Dooley, we don't know yet. Um, so, we now have a fast-firing robe that's giving us 8 shield every 5 seconds, because it's to the left of loop. Uh, which is nice, that's, that's a nice, um, that's a really, really good amount. Um, 1 shield per second is pretty decent, and we're now hitting above that. Uh, robe, by the way, is a medium gear, so it's taking up a good chunk of space, but... You'd expect that for getting more than one shield a second now. Okay, look, continuing on, we have marbles. I want to get the, the general idea as to how the whole build is fit together, and then we'll critique what we can. Uh, marbles. Every nine seconds, every nine seconds, every nine seconds, gain one shield. When you use an item, give this plus one shield to the fight. Okay, this is where it starts to get interesting. So... Marbles is doing just one shield, but this triggers primarily off when you use other items. We already have five second charge on Robe. Uh, we have an eight second charge on Landscraper and a seven second on Loop. All of those are going to trigger before Marbles. So the first time Marbles triggers so far, it's going to be plus four shield. Plus the three from Loop, it'll be seven shield for a nine second cooldown. That's still looking pretty good. That is looking pretty damn good. There's a lot of shielding. I am starting to wonder where our damage is. If we have damage. We might not. Spiky shield might be where this comes in. I don't know. Uh, I have only loosely read it. And don't remember it off the top of my head. But so far, Marvel's excellent addition. Uh, it just fits the build perfectly, right? And it's a small item as well. So it slots right into that nice little tiny spot. Jewelry is the last item that we're giving shielding to. Or is it? Because Jewelry doesn't have a charge time. So Jewelry is useless either side of it. The Jewelry could have gone anywhere. And it says, when you gain a shield, give your shielding items plus one for the fight. Holy! Ooh! For a small item? Alright, Jewelry really brings this build together. So, Jewelry... Okay, I'm going to reserve judgment on Jewelry. Because we still have to know what the cooldown of Spiky Shield is and what it does. But currently, we are doing a lot of shielding. And that's going to buff our shielding even more. You've managed to find the item that makes this build exponential. And that is perfect. That is key. Okay, spiky shield before I get too into this one. Every, I, I, I had a feeling this was it. I couldn't quite remember it. Spiky shield. Every eight seconds, deal damage equal to your shield. It's a medium weapon. Okay, so robe triggers doing five shielding because it's the first thing that triggers no other buffs have happened yet that then makes all other shielding items do plus one shielding for the fight loop then triggers giving all of the items to the left of it plus three shielding so landscraper robe and marbles so at this point robe is up to nine shielding at eight seconds landscraper triggers landscraper has been given plus four so it's a plus 12, it's plus 12 shielding at this point. And then when it triggers, it gives all of your shielding items plus one for the fight. And it triggers jewelry, which gives all of your shielding items plus one shield for the fight. So when landscaper triggers, that's plus two shielding. I don't want you to focus so much on the numbers I'm saying. Just how many numbers I'm saying. And this is within the, this is within the first eight seconds of the fight. At 10 seconds, robe triggers again, and we start the whole thing again only elevated you're now doing so much more shielding this is actually I, I was in my head i was like okay this is this is a decent amount of shielding but we've seen people do far much more damage than this with the way that this build is working now i believe that a rotten pickles build can hold out against the sandstorm for a little while and that's important for a pygmalion build Pygmalion builds are typically built around being able to survive into the sandstorm. Not all of them, but, you know, luxury tents, for example. I'm starting to think, I'm trying to place this in my head, 
How would this deal with luxury tents? Would it be able to go toe to toe with the almighty luxury tents? And honestly, probably not. But that wasn't the that wasn't the task. The task wasn't to build the best luxury tents build you could. The task was to build something based on loop. And this is actually really, really I, I just I really love the synergy between jewelry and landscaper. I know neither of them were the item. Loop was the item, but that was a really good pick. And then you're giving Spiky Shield the cooldown uh, speed upgrade, I guess. I wouldn't say cooldown reduction, but it's kind of the opposite. Um, so you're starting to deal damage equal to your shield. Now, the, the one downside to Spiky Shield is it's not like Pygmalion's Lion's Cane, right? It's not deal damage equal to a percentage of your maximum health. It is deal damage equal to your shield. So if you can't keep up that shield, your damage is going to be very low. So I like I like the inclusion of it. I think it will really help you deal with the NPC fights. I think when it comes to player fights, Spiky Shield is going to let you down and be a bit of a waste of a medium slot. That being said, it's a really good build in general. Uh, we are looking at a hell of a lot of shielding. It's going to be really difficult for the enemy to penetrate through that and start hitting your health. Again, it's a shielding build. Be wary about jewels. Be wary about map, potentially. Or just builds in general that ignore shields. But yeah, a really interesting build. Very, very safe against NPCs. So you'll be able to get a lot of money as well. So if you are... If we're looking for how this build evolves and goes late game. Because you can fight so many NPCs... In the current state of the build, you don't have to worry too much about going to JJ or Andy or someone to find that shiny or fancy upgrade because you can farm money through the day and then use Forger and keep re-rolling effectively. It's, I know it's a re-roll mechanic, we have an entire video about that, but the fact that you should be able to safely fight a lot of the NPCs to get a lot of gold to make re-rolling a better option means you should be able to more successfully than some... No surprise, you're getting mugged. <laughs> you should be able to more successfully than some get your shinies and fancies, which we're not entirely sure what all of them do yet, but they're definitely a big upgrade. I can just imagine getting like shiny jewelry being plus two or plus three shielding every time it triggers. Landscraper may be doing a similar thing, and then you get the fancies, which start giving you armor or they become smaller so maybe landscaper becomes a medium item you can start fitting in other small items this build definitely has potential to scale uh, which is what we like to see we like definitely need to consider scaling um so yeah all in all a really interesting build my official babok rating for a rotten pickles loop build out of five it does its job really, really well. It's a really good, quick firing, exponentially scaling, shielding build. General strength, I think it's a bit weaker than some of the other Pygmalion builds. And it's not particularly spicy. And I didn't say that was in that was that was what you had to do. You definitely didn't have to make it spicy. But I don't feel like I want to give this a straight 5 out of 5. Then again, it is very strong. And I really like the inclusion, the synergy between Jewelry and Landscaper. Great, but I feel like that's, that's such an important, vital piece of this puzzle. So I am going to give this a 4 out of 5 for bot rating. So, congratulations there, Rotten Pickle. Solid, solid build. And uh, I wonder if anyone can beat this one. Uh, editor Greg here. Uh, I'm just getting towards the end of that video, as you can tell. Uh, I just thought I'd say if you're enjoying this content um, and you want to check out some more Pygmalion stuff, there is a whole video going through an entire Pygmalion game from Raynad. You might have seen some of it in the background. Uh, you should definitely give that one a watch. There's plenty of good Pygmalion items in there and uh, maybe you can come up with a better build for loot than uh, some of the people here.